Hi dear children welcome to new english class it's a poetry today village blacksmith <clears throat> as you know this poem comes under thieves and deeds your third unit and the first you the first prose unit you hope you remember the boy who drew uh, pictures he was trying to make the people happy by his deeds next one is rosa park sat still the rosa park with her work she was she has she has emancipated millions of people and the fourth there was a poem titled the sower and the poem we heard that one it is heightening it is highlighting and or the greatness of a sower or a farmer now like that in this poem w h long fellows poem village blacksmith tells the story of a ordinary human being how he lived in that village with his deeds how he has transformed the villagers how he had uh, led a very pious life with his sweat with his deeds that is what I explained in this poem uh, listen to this poem this poem is written in 1880s that is very 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 old poem so those time in every village there will be a blacksmith the reason is is a time of industrial revolution so people wanted to make their tools with the help of you no know, factories are very very less in number so blacksmith use the <coughs> shed to make weapons tools and all these things with metals so the importance of so the people used to look at them where with a strange eyes they will they will they will be always curious about to know about the blacksmith and a blacksmith's life is very well depicted in this poem listen to it the village blacksmith this is the poem as you all know what is the meaning of this word blacksmith here let's read the poem under a spreading chestnut tree the will the smith the mighty man is he with the large sinewy hands and the muscles of his brawny arms are strong as iron bands this is the first stanza so this poem is having eight stanzas it is a second stanza third one fourth one fifth one sixth seventh and eight and every stanza contain six lights that is the structure of the poem the first stanza we have read just now it's about village blacksmith and the first the character where it occurs as i told it is under a spreading chestnut tree chestnut tree is here you can see here the photograph under a spreading chestnut tree spreading means it is spread it all over the area very big the village smithy stands the smith the will blacksmith a mighty man is he he is a mighty man he is a big man he is a tall man with large and sinewy hands his hands are very uh, muscular and powerful 
and the muscles of his brawny arms brawny means colored that is not fair complexion it is dark complexion so people are strong as iron band here poet is using a simile that is he is comparing the strength with the strength of the iron or we can say it's an exaggeration also hope this first stanza is over hope you understood we are passing on to the next one about his about his strength about his size it is de described here we are passing on his hair is crisp it's not smooth soft it is very crisp and black and long it is not haircut is not done he is he is having a long hair and it is black his face is like a tan his face is like a tan here though tan means brown but here the strength and its glowing uh, nature is described here his face is like the tan his brow is wet to with honest sweat wet honest sweat so his brow brow means eyebrow eyebrow is wet is drenched with the honest sweat sweat means perspiration where to kondu nanjirikkunu means he is hard working he earns whatever he can he earns whatever he can and looks the whole world in the face because he is an earning this um kindness so he looks their face straightly he is very bold he is very proud for he owes not to any man he never owes to any ma any man so he looks at the face so this stanza is telling about his personality what type of man he is he is a hard working man he is very proud he never owes to anyone so these two stanza tells and give a very good picture about the blacksmith here we can we count from morning till night here we can and we count means whole week day in and day out means ratri and pagal from from morning till night from morning to night that means whole day all night whole he is continuously working that is the meaning of this one he is continuously working without taking any leave you can hear his bellows blow bellows means hope you have seen here this one this cycle this wheel if it is rotated the wind will be produced and it will blowing the fire here so that it will burn like forge so this is the bellow and if you are pressing it wind will come out so one can see his bellow is blows day in and day out week in and week out from morn till night that means he is continuously working you can hear him swing his heavy sledge his heavy sledge you can hear his bellows blow you can hear him his swing his heavy sledge sledge means the hammer to hit the things uh, what do you call in malayalam that is kooda manava sledge to hit on the iron hot iron with measured beat and slow this beat and slow means one beat strongly and a light one like that uh, in 
you can see that one like sexton ringing the village bell when the evening sun is low there is the sound which produced by the hitting by the sledge is compared to the sexton sexton means the person who rings bell in the church at evening when the sun is low they start uh, ringing bell in in times to to make the public aware of the time because it the story takes place long long in 18 century 18 1885 so that time there was no clock and all these things people wanted to know the time so there is a person in the every church he will ring the bell the person is known as sexton sexton ringing the village bell when the evening sun is low after the sunset so during day time what they will do because they can see see the time with the help of sun sun dials we can see so once again we kin we caught from morn till night you can hear his bellows blow you can hear him swing his heavy sledge with a measured beat and slow like a sexton ringing the village bell when the evening sun is low so fourth stanza and children coming home from school look in at the open door they love to see the flaming forge and hear the bellows roar and catch the burning sparks that fly like chaff from threshing floor here you can see children who are coming back from school on the way they will look into the blacksmith shed the door is open so they look into it there they see the forge the flaming forge means when the bellow is beating definitely that wind will come and the fire will be burning a reddish color and children wanted to see that one and he will take out the raw red iron and hit to with this sledge so these all is a very good scene for the children and they wanted to hear the bellows roar the sound they they wanted to hear and catch the burning sparks that fly because when it is he is hitting with the sledge a spark will fly away from the iron and also from the from work from the forge agni gundathil ninnum deeply porthaykku varaku like and the poet is comparing that flying of the spark from the forge is like chaff from threshing floor this you cannot be familiar with this one chaff and floor and all these things nellu koyithinu shesham katta medikkunna samayam nellina adikkiya cheya adikkunna samayathu adil ninnu manigal ellam thaale veerum adil manigal illatha nelmani illatha va mulu ondiyum parnu povum and the poet is doing a wonderful comparison here why the poet is doing such a comparison because it is a village it is taking place you these scenes you can be seen only in villages because fields and threshing of the uh, floor also can be seen only in the village so we have completed four stanzas and as i told it is having eight stanzas so here we are just stopping and re hope you have enjoyed the poem the first part of the poem this four stanza we have discussed and i am going to give you four questions to answer try answering these questions and send to me in this group itself or you can send to your teachers thank you stay home and be safe